This bumper also happens to be really rare and uh, I do like it a lot. It does have one major problem and it's that my front mount does not fit. So I decided I was going to do neither of those things and make it my life hard. I'm gonna make my own bumper. This is my 2005 Impreza STI. This car has been with me since the beginning of Illumisthetic and it's one of the very few cars that hold sentimental value to me. One of my favorite parts is this Zero Sports front bumper for this car. I don't really like too many bumpers for this car and this happens to be one of the few of them. This bumper also happens to be really rare. Um, it's one of maybe only two or three in all of North America and uh, I do like it a lot. However, it does have one major problem and it's that my front mount does not fit. So I have one of two reasonable options. I can get a new intercooler that would sweep further back, and I know they make them, to avoid this issue completely, or I could suck it up and trim the bumper or get a different bumper. I decided I was going to do neither of those things and make it my life hard. I'm gonna make my own bumper that looks like this, but clears my intercooler. In order to do that, I'm gonna need my trusty, dusty, handy dandy Artec Leo. So now that we have the scans finished, I have them all imported into Blender and reoriented. The way we have these scans is they're all pre-aligned, but I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of the design and thought process going behind why the bumper is the way it is. So we see here, this is the raw car with the, all the scans. Uh, I have all my assembly stuff up here, but you can see I can go with all removed, right? That's everything removed. I have my all assembled. So this is basically just the entire front end of the car. We have bumper removed right here. We have fender tabs. So this is actually just the scan of the bumper by itself, but I cut it because I don't actually care about the bumper. We have hood removed. So this is to capture the area right there. And then we have just the top tabs. So same thing, just cut off and align the same way right there. See that? So. That is kind of what we have going on. And then I go ahead and remodel these tabs and I'm gonna print them separately and make sure they fit. So that's kind of like the base of making sure that our bumper that we're gonna 3D print works and works well. So just to give you guys a little context, this was a very early bumper we designed while we were still learning how 3D printing works. So I actually had quite a few designers come in and design a couple of bumpers. And what I'm going to show you is ultimately what we agreed on. Um, I, we had three designers come up and I basically chose the one I like the most. So we're going to go ahead and show you that after I'm done showing you the scans. So again, this is the same scan, but I wanted to show you basically why I wanted to remake this bumper. If you see this right here, this is essentially why I needed to remake this bumper. This is a stock zero sports bumper. Um, more or less, if I had done the piping, it would have cut into the bumper right there, and I did not like that. did not want to deal with it. Um, but yeah, if you see my other scan, if I do bumper removed, or sorry, all assembled, you kind of you, you kind of see the exact same thing. The, the piping would have uh, cut through the bumper, so we couldn't be having that. So after a couple of careful considerations, we ended up with this. Uh, yeah, we ended up with, or this is one of the de designs. Um, uh, so we ended up with basically this. Um, this is one of the submissions that I got from the few few of the designers that I was working with. You can see that the 
bumper clears the pipes here, right there. Um, but there were a couple things that I do want to point out um, that kind of details that I cared about. So you can see that there's like a body line here, but it's constant radius and it doesn't get wider. And if we actually look at the original Zero Sports bumper, right, you can see that it actually kind of tapers out a little bit. So it's narrower here and gets thicker. Whereas on this one, it's basically pretty even. It's hard to describe. It's, it's, it's kind of one of those things where you do need to see it in person. And then we lost the detail here that I kind of liked. So we ultimately made a couple of revisions and ended up with this. So I did really like the original step up on the Zero Sports bumper from there, but I wanted it flat on the bottom so I could mount a splitter for motorsport use and whatnot. So that's why we added this lip here. And then I kind of punched this out a little bit to give it more detail. It's hard to see. Uh, other than that, we did some pretty basic stuff like add reinforcement on the edges. And then you can see here we have the tabs here. Um, that way we make sure it fits. So the other than that, I mean, we have the bumper right here. Double click to make sure. We made this uh, opening smaller so that it only shows the fins. And this is kind of where I found out my front mount wasn't centered. Um, this is, this is this, yeah. So, but other than that, I mean, this is ready to print. So we're going to go ahead and export this into the printer and see how it goes. So I have the bumper imported into my preferred slicing software, which in this case is Kira. And you can kind of see here, even with my gigantic Modix printer, um, it doesn't fit. So what we're going to have to do is I do luckily have quite a few of these printers. So I have these split into smaller pieces here. And what we do is we print it into the various small pieces just to make the process faster. And then I'll glue them together, um, which is quite a common method, but this is just to make things a little faster. So you're going to go ahead and see that process basically summarized. And if you're interested in the more printing side of things, you can always go ahead and let us know in the comments. And I'm happy to make a kind of a printing specific video. So you can see here, this is basically all the small pieces of the bumper cut up. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to slice this because uh, it's going to go individually, but you can kind of see. So I have the entire bottom of the bumper as one piece right there. Um, yeah, so this is the entire bottom of the bumper. These are the sides. I have them cut in half right here. This is the other side. This is the top. Oh, no. These are, this is in case I don't want to print them. Yeah, and then these are the tops. So all in all, I usually have this printed in five pieces total. And then I'll just glue it together. So let's actually go ahead and print it. So, now that the bumper is tested on the car, this is the part where I, as a designer, decide whether or not I want to make certain design changes, reprint it. If there's a couple of fitment issues, which is not uh, not beyond impossible, um, I will also go ahead and fix that. So just not, not to bore you with the details, but let's just consider this bumper more or less finished. I'm now going to go ahead and take this down to Southern California where our technical partners, Big Duck Club, will take over and turn this into a fiberglass bumper. We're going to take this bumper to LA, uh, bring it to our partners at Big Duck Club, and they're going to turn it into a fiberglass bumper. So we have a bumper uh, ready to take to our partners over at Big Duck Club. RJ's over here. What's up, dude? What's up? Um, this is RJ. He's the owner operator of Big Duck Club. Yes, you want to talk about what we do here? Or yes, what sir. We do here? So we are a manufacturing and design company. So what we do is that we design our own parts, white bodies, lips, uh, etc. And we focus in actually creating parts that are easily repro reproducible. So uh, anything that is in terms of fiberglass, carbon fiber, uh, carbon Kevlar, and some cottons, uh, we're able to do everything in-house from the processing, molding, manufacturing, designing, and whatnot. So right now, in terms of film aesthetics, uh, we're able to collaborate into them 3D printing something that is so freaking crazy, and then we're able to mold it and make it a reality. So it's yep. sick. So now that I have the bumper here, 
Um, I'm gonna drop this off to RJ. It does take a little time for this to work because we all have schedules, but RJ is gonna be able to show you basically the process of how these bumpers are made um, from how it goes from a 3D print to a fiberglass production part. Yep. So this bumper is a 3D print. It's pretty raw. This is actually rougher than normally how we'd give it to RJ. Um, we try to make these look a little nicer. This is just kind of a demo unit for the purpose of this video. But RJ, can you explain what happens after I've dropped this off to you? Yes, so basically since this, this is 3D printed, uh, I believe that you use PLA, correct? This is ASA. This is ASA, yeah. okay. So it's so ABS. In the, in the previous versions that we've had, you know, there is a little bit of uh, bending or, you know, slight heating up. And when you start creating moldings, you start applying resins that tend to heat up all the way up to like around 190 degrees. So before we start any molding process, we actually have to make sure that this is one sturdy and it is very smooth. To create the smoothness, we're going to use different types of uh, clay, bondo, and other types of fillers. So we can make this very, very smooth and nice and basically, you know, as pristine as we can. And then after that, we are actually going to use a hardener. So the hardener itself creates uh, this now smooth piece uh, into a very uh, rough shape uh, part. And then we're going to start applying the whole resin and fiberglass and carbon fiber so we could create the mold. As an example of the smoothening that I was talking about, as you guys could see, this is an actual real part. It is ABS in the back and, and another customer created a metal part. This is a lip for an E30. And what we did is that we actually use a ton of uh, Bondo to, since this is a smaller part, we use a ton of Bondo to just create all the seams and cleanliness and we could create a, a nice smooth uh, surface. You could see that it's very nice. After that, it was painted with a, spe a special uh, gel coat for molding. It's called a, a tooling gel coat. And then from there, you know, we create an, an, or we apply another layer of hardener so it could be super solid and ready for molding. So this is basically how the part will look right before it's molded. It is strong, smooth, and sturdy. So as you guys could see, this is actually the mold from that lip that we just showed you right now. This is a two-piece mold. This is the part that we made. So this is the, the very first part that I just showed you guys right now. And this is the way how the mold would look. A lot of people, they use, you know, one piece molds. Uh, we try to use two piece molds for multiple reasons. One's because it allows us to put more or less material in areas that are specific or more prone to damage. So let's say if you want more material in this area, we will put it more without having to be constrained to the actual uh, limitations of space based on whatever we're using to lay that material. So this is a two piece mold, sorry, where we have uh, both, you know, the upper and lower uh, flat faces of the lip as well as the upper mold itself where you actually have everything needed for the applying and uh, screwing or fastening the, the piece into the car. So as one of the next steps to creating the perfect piece, it is actually rolling it into every single crevice. This is an extremely important part of fiberglassing, carbon fiber, etc., because you're actually taking away bubbles from the material, from the fiberglass, etc., and you're preventing that any of those bubbles transfer into the gel coat or into the part itself. If there's any bubbles, what you're going to notice is that you could, you know, like in a little sticker, you could uh, pinhole them and then they'll pop in a way and they'll, you know, create a little piece of hold or, or drag or whatnot when you're painting the part. So in this case, once again, we pre preg unquote, the part itself or the, the material itself, we put it in the actual mold and then we take every single piece of bubble out by rolling this with, with a specialty uh, laminating tool. So now that you have this part, so the next step is basically laying some of the resin dry. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna let this resin uh, dry, we're gonna put them in the rack for about three to four hours, maybe a little less. And then we're just gonna trim this little portion or this excess of material around the mold. So like that, uh, it is easy to start, you know, taking out the part post in its final process. Once that is uh, trimmed, now we let the whole part cure for about four, uh, 24 hours in this weather. It depends on the type of weather that, that, that you are having. And then after 24 hours, uh, we add maybe one more piece of material, let it dry again, and then it is ready for polishing and taking out and basically packaging for its final stage. So basically right now what you are seeing, it is a part 
cured after about 24 hours. So you could see that it has been trimmed in those little edges that we spoke about. And then now the fiberglass itself, it is dry to the actual mold. In this particular part, which is an E46 a rear quarter panel with the tail light buckets for the drift guys, we actually need to apply another piece of fiberglass into it so we could create the whole tail light portion. Uh, but if, it, if, it, if we didn't use the tail light portion, what we would do is that we would take it out of the mold. Now we would grab an actual sander and then we would start sanding all this to spec so like that it could fit for the final part. So uh, yeah. And I believe we have a Subaru bumper that's ready to demold, is that correct? Correct, we do have a Subaru mold ready to demold. It has already gone through this process. It's already dry. It's already been pre-trimmed. So now we're gonna take it out of the mold. You guys are gonna see the very first time this part comes out, see the front and back side of it. Then we're gonna trim it and then we're gonna, you know, polish it a little bit, see exactly if there's any parts that need any, you know, little fix in here and there as it is fiberglass and then be ready to go to his final customer. Sick. What Jesus is doing right now is that he is taking apart the multi-stage mold. So this particular mold has three different uh, parts. You have the sides, the bottom, and the actual bumper itself. So, and in order for us to take this part out, he has to take uh, the, you know, uh, the fasteners of the second part of the mold. So like that, we can pull up the part. So now that we took off, you know, the bottom aspect of the mold in, in this uh, multi-piece mold, uh, we already pre-took the part for you guys because there's a process behind this. So the part comes out. And this is what you see of the mold. This is legitimately in its very first pull of the mold itself. And every single part after the mold it has, you know, little nicks and dents like, or such as this one. So all this has to be fixed. This has to be trimmed and this has to be cleaned. But then from there it goes to the final client. So this mold here roughly weighs about 80 pounds. Uh, it is quite heavy. As you guys can see, there is about uh, 10, millim 10 millimeters worth of materials and it's incredibly heavy. As you guys could see, uh, as, and as we mentioned before, you know, there's little fibers and resins. This right here is actually just gel coat. So in order for us to create the sparks, we have to spray on gel coat. And look, it just goes up like that. That is just paint to it. So all that uh, has to be trimmed for the final stage of the part. So as you guys could see, basically the last trimming of the parts we're done right now, it is done simply so the edges of the actual part could be nice and smooth and basically it would fit the final uh, aesthetic of the part itself. We, uh, you guys are wondering how the hell did he do that by hand? We actually have been doing this for over 10 years, so we kind of know how to do it by hand. But uh, when we make the molds, there are different key lines that we actually etch into the mold itself. And we have a little key line for us to, uh, to guide us when we are cutting all these all this parts. The next step to do would be clean where both of the molds were uh, put together. So like that, this could be a smooth surface. And then from there, we could start creating the whole path to fixing every, every single little knack and detail that goes from there. So what we're doing here right now, it is sanding the parts of mold one and mold two. So like that, we could smoothen both parts that were adhered by glue and overall gives us the final part of the process in making the part that is going to go to the ultimate customer. So RJ says that this bumper is ready to pick up. So we're gonna take this back with us, drive back to NorCal and let's get this on the car. We have the bumper back in NorCal. We're gonna go to our neighbors right behind us at Golden State Auto Collision, my buddy Ken. And he's gonna go ahead and paint match this to my Subaru for me. Can 
Hey Ken, can you uh, paint this to match my Subaru? Will do. Okay, cool. See you tomorrow? Yep, sounds All right. good. Sick. It's the next morning or next day, and we're gonna go get pick up the bumper. Ken! Here you go, boss. Bumper. Sick. Top it off, nice and clean. Wow, it looks great. So I have the bumper back at the shop right there. Um, and we're gonna basically prep to put it on my car. But before we do that, I wanna put these brake ducts on my car. Uh, these bumpers have integrated brake ducting. So we already went ahead and put them on. This is an option that comes with these bumpers. They're 3D printed, so I wanted to make full use of them. So TomTom's -Tom's currently uh, putting extended studs unrelated. And we're also gonna take the dust shield off and put these brake ducts. Uh, brake deck adapters into my car. So we're gonna go ahead and plumb that up right now. So he's wrapping up the brake duct and I'm gonna go ahead and put the bumper on. So I have the clamps ready and I'm gonna go ahead and do this so that I can make sure my links are correct and get my bumpers on. So 